Hello, and welcome to another video from the YouTube channel, From Religion to Agnostic. Today we are going to look at Tiras, the youngest of Japheth's sons. Tiras was, according to Genesis 10 and Chronicles 1, the last named son of Japheth who is otherwise unmentioned in the Hebrew Bible. The name is sometimes associated by scholars with the Teresh or Tertia, one of the groups which made up the Sea Peoples, a naval confederacy which terrorized Egypt and other Mediterranean around 1200 BCE. These Sea People are referred to as, Tertia, in an inscription of Rameses III, and as, Teresh of the Sea, on the Merneptah steel. Some theologians associate Tiras with Thrace or the Etruscans. In 1838, the German theologian Johann Christian Friedrich Tuch suggested identifying Tiras with the Etruscans. Who, according to Greek and Roman sources such as Herodotus, 1, 94, had been living in Lydia as the Tirsinoi before emigrating to Italy as early as the 8th century BC. Ancient and medieval identifications, according to the Book of Jubilees, the inheritance of Tiras consisted of four large islands in the ocean. Josephus wrote that Tiras became ancestor of the Thiracians, Thracians, a flame haired, red or blonde haired, people according to Xenophanes, Antiquities of the Jews, 1, 6. Mufsis Korinitsi, 5th century Armenian historian, attributed the founder of Armenian nation, Haik, to being a grandson of Tiras. According to Tractate Yuma, in the Talmud, Tiras is the ancestor of Persia. The Persian historian Muhammad ibn Jarir al Tabari, c. 915, recounts a tradition that Tiras had a son named Batadal, whose daughters Karnabil, Bukhut, and Arsal became the wives of Kush, Put, and Canaan, respectively. The medieval Hebrew compilation, the Chronicles of Jeremiel, aside from quoting Yasipin as above, also provides a separate tradition of Tiras, sons elsewhere, naming them as Mach, Tabel, Bal, Anna, Shampla, Mia, and Alash. This material was ultimately derived from Pseudophilo, ca. 75 AD, extant copies of which list Tiras sons as Mach, Tabel, Balana, Samplamisi, and Alas. Another medieval rabbinic textbook of Jasher, 7 9, records the sons of Tiras as Binab, Gera, Lupirion, and Gilak, and in 1014, it asserts that Rushish, Kushni, and Angelis are among his descendants. An earlier, 950 AD, rabbinic compilation, the Yasipin, similarly claims Tiras' descendants to be the Rossi of Kiv, i.e. Kievan Rus, listing them together with his brother Meshek's supposed descendants as the Rossi, the Sixni, and the Eagle Suzi. Okay so before we go any further, I want to look at a few verses back. It states and I. Quote. The medieval Hebrew compilation, the Chronicles of Jeremiel, aside from quoting Yasipin as above, also provides a separate tradition of Tira's sons elsewhere. Okay so one doing research, would stop here and look up the Chronicles of Jeremiel. Note, not just in Wikipedia either, use other sources such as the Jewish Encyclopedia, and other articles written about this family and the line and the history tied to it, p.s. This is where you need to fight, cognitive dissonance, and pursue that other mythologies may hold some truth, the digging into research thus begins, ha ha ha. So let's look at it, as mentioned before my opinion was inserted. The Chronicles of Jeremiel the Chronicles of Jeremiel is a voluminous work that draws largely on Pseudophilos' earlier history of biblical events and is of special interest because it includes Hebrew and Aramaic versions of certain deuterocanonical books in the Septuagint. The Chronicles were published in English as the Chronicles of Jeremiel or, the Hebrew Bible Historiali by the Royal Asiatic Society, translated by Moses Gaster, 1899. Gaster stated in his extensive preface his view, p. 20, that the Chronicles were compiled from several Hebrew sources, some quite ancient and others more recent. The actual compiler of the Chronicles identifies himself as, Eleazar ben Asher the Levite, who, according to Gaster, lived in the Rhineland in the 14th century. The most recent events depicted in the Chronicles refer to the time of the Crusades, but the entire rest of it pertains to the period before AD 70. Among the early sources quoted in the work is the 1st century Rabbi Eliezer ben Hyrcanus. Gaster explained that he chose to title it, Chronicles of Jeremiel, instead of, Chronicles of Eleazar, because of his analysis that Eleazar was merely a compiler, while the enigmatic, Jerayen Miel, is the source most extensively reproduced, following the Yasipin which is otherwise extant. This, Jeremiel, has since been identified as Jeremiel ben Solomon, thought to have flourished in Italy around 1150.
After a thorough discussion of all the textual evidence, Gaster further concluded that, like the closely related Sefer Hayashar, it relies on sources ultimately dependent on Isidore of Seville, particularly evident in its mention of, Franks, and, Lombards, among the sons of Noah. Okay, and as any good researcher would do, one thing in this stuck out, and I am sure it did for many of you seeking the truth. Let's look a few verses back to where it says, and I quote, following the Yossipan which is otherwise extant. So let's look at Yossipan. Yossipan, Hebrew, Sefer Yossipan, is a chronicle of Jewish history from Adam to the age of Titus. It is named after its supposed author, Josephus Flavius, though it was actually composed in the 10th century in South Italy. The Ethiopic version of Josipan is recognized as canonical by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The Sefer Josipan was compiled in Hebrew early in the 10th century by a Jewish native of the Greek-speaking Jewish community of South Italy, which was at that time part of the Byzantine Empire. Later Judah Leon ben Moses Moscone, a Roman Yot Jew from Akrita edited and expanded the Sefer Josipan. The first edition was printed in Mantua in 1476. The book subsequently appeared in many forms, one of the most popular being in Yiddish, with quaint illustrations. Though the chronicle is more legendary than historical, it is not unlikely that ancient sources were used by the first compiler. The book enjoyed great popularity in England. In 1558, Peter Morvan translated an abbreviated version into English, and edition after edition was called for. Lucien Wolf has shown that the English translations of the Bible aroused so much interest in the Jews that there was a widespread desire to know more about them. This led to the circulation of many editions of Josipan, which thus formed a link in the chain of events which culminated in the readmission of the Jews to England by Oliver Cromwell. As the Muslim writer Ibn Hazm, d. 1063, was acquainted with the Arabic translation by a Yemenite Jew, Daniel Quolson proposes that the author lived at the beginning of the 9th century. The anonymous author of the work writes that he is copying from the writings of the old Jewish Roman historian Josephus Flavius, whom the author calls Joseph ben Gorion. The name, Joseph, is given the Greek ending, on, resulting in the book's title, Jose Fon, Josepin, or Josipin. His Arabic name, Yosibis, is, according to Wellhausen, identical with, Hegesippus. A gloss gives the form from the Italian, Giuseppe. Treber held the singular view that the author lived in the 4th century, and derived much of his material from Hegesippus. Commencing with Adam and the geographical conditions of the first millennium BCE, the author passes to the legendary history of Rome and Babylon, to the accounts of Daniel, Zerubbabel, according to the Apocrypha, the Second Temple, and Cyrus the Great, and to the histories of Alexander the Great and his successors. He then gives the history of the Jews down to the destruction of the temple. The last part contains, among other things, a brief history of Hannibal and an account of the coronation of an emperor, which, according to Basnage refers to that of Otto the Great, crowned 962, this would be the only and a most valuable source of information concerning this event. If Basnage's conjecture is correct, the date of the composition of the, Yossipan, may be placed at the end of the 10th century. Yossipan, is written in comparatively pure Biblical Hebrew, shows a predilection for certain Biblical phrases and archaism, and is rich in poetical passages and in maxims and philosophical speculations. And Yossipan's value as a historical source. Yossipan, was much read and was highly respected as a historical source by the Jews of the Middle Ages. Joseph Justus Scaliger in his, Elan Chus Triaris I Nicolaiserarii, was the first to doubt its worth, Jandrusius, D. 1609, held it to be historically valueless on account of its many chronological mistakes, Zunes and Delitzschev. Branded the author as an imposter. In fact, both the manuscripts and printed editions are full of historical errors, misconceptions of its sources, and extravagant outbursts of vanity on the part of the author. But there is scarcely any book in Jewish literature that has undergone more changes at the hands of copyists and compilers, Judah Ibn Moscone knew of no less than four different compilations or abridgments. The later printed editions are one-third larger than the Editio Princeps of Mantua. Okay and now we return to Terrace. Modern Interpretations English theologian John Gill, 1697 through 1771, claimed Tiras was more aptly described as the founder of Thrace than Persia, stating that Tiras is interpreted better the Targums of Jonathan and Jerusalem, and so a Jewish chronologer, 
By Thracia, for the descendants of Theras, as Josephus observes, the Greeks call Thracians, and in Thrace was a river called Athiras, which has in it a trace of this man's name, and Audresis, whom the Thracians worshipped, is. The same with Tiras, which god sometimes goes by the name of Thrax, and is one of the names of Mars, the god of the Thracians. According to some biblical commentators, the descendants of Tiras have been identified with the Thersinoi, who raided throughout the Aegean Sea, and to the Tertia, to Russia or Teresh, who were recorded by Egyptian sources at the time of Pharaohs Merneptah and Ramses II. Biblical commentators also propose a possible connection with the city of Troy, known in the Hittite language as Taruza. Alrighty and that will do it for this video, catch you on the next one. Have a great day, and be safe. If you enjoyed this video, please think about subscribing, as well as hitting the like and sharing would help out a lot. Thank you all, peace out, people. Thank <laughs> you.